Hi, I'm Jessica Patterson of Spinning Shadows Fiber Arts, and welcome and good morning. Today, I'm going to start spinning the main braid of my um, May kit from Napa Valley Fiber. Uh, this is the theme of the kit is roses, which is very special to me because it reminds me of my grandmother, who always had the most beautiful roses outside of her house. Some of them very colorful, some of the multicolored ones like the peace rose and such. And so this is going to be a very special spin for me in remembrance, somewhat in remembrance of her. And also I just really like roses, they're pretty flowers. So this month's kit, which I opened for Mother's Day, it being roses is just fun. Now this is, I believe, a Paul Worth silk blend. This is um, very fluffy, I just pulled it out of the bag and very shiny. So I'm super, super excited about spinning this. I'm hoping to use it in weaving, but we'll see what it ultimately ends up being when I'm finished. So I actually got the double braid kit, so I get two of these to either enjoy or give one away. I'm probably gonna spin both of them. So today I will be spinning on my Antique Wheel Grace. This is actually um, my main spinning wheel as far as the antiques go. This one I love spinning on. It's just so solid and spins perfectly fast. She actually has a beautiful cage distaff set up, but it's packed at the moment. So hopefully later on I'll be able to show you spinning from a distaff onto a wheel. That would be really fun. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this braid. And as always, I have trouble figuring out which end to undo from. <laughs> there we go. And I think, from the looks of it, I'm going to divide this in half, maybe. Um, I'm not sure what yet whether I want to do a single or two-ply, or not a single. I don't usually weave with singles, but um, two-ply or chain-ply. Usually when I spin on this wheel, I will do a chain ply, but since I discovered that I can use um, little cotton balls, um, pom-poms basically, to wind balls onto, um, I, I discovered how to make fly balls, so um, I may just end up doing that instead. First thing I'll do is approximately half it, <laughs> approximately. These braids are always so long that, um, you know, it's never perfect. Ah, there we go. I believe the bobbin on this wheel is about one ounce, so I try to split up my fiber for an ounce. Um, Someday I'll get more bobbins or either or turn more bobbins for this wheel because I really like using it. And I'm splitting it down lengthwise just for to make maybe make the ply a little more consistent. And now I get to pick an end to start from. Why don't we start with this beautiful pink end here? And apparently my shirt really likes fiber too. So This wheel is actually the one to where I spun my longest spread from. It was about a thousand yards, I think, and it was very, very fine. It was Coredale. So this is a very special wheel to me. I was actually very excited when I saw her in an antique shop. I actually at first thought it wasn't a functioning wheel. Um, but one of those colonial uh, look-alikes and then I sat down and I actually looked at it and discovered yeah this is a functioning wheel just um, somebody had put a shoestring on the back and I had never seen a wheel with such a tiny um, orifice which is the hole at the front that lets this yarn through onto the bobbin and um, I looked it up online after I had purchased it, and uh, 
found that, yes, it was. It is an antique wheel, probably from the 1800s. And um, it's got grease stains from probably it being oiled with tallow or something that turned it dark colored. And uh, it's got the markings of long use. This was somebody's workhorse. And uh, I just am in love with this wheel. It's so beautiful and it works so well. Now you can see I'm treadling at a fairly decent pace and just um, drafting fairly short. I'm doing a sort of a forward draw and then letting twist run up into the into the thread to catch it. Um, I let the twist do most of the work for me so I'm not continually drafting um, or fighting with the fiber. Um, I like to do somewhat of a long draw style when I'm spinning because I find that's easier on my hands. But yeah, this is actually, this fiber is very fluffy. It's very, um, I don't quite know how to describe it. It's very soft. It feels smooth and soft on my hands. So it's just, it's spinning like butter, especially with this wheel. Um, and it's making a beautiful thread. Um, I don't know if you can see this up against my hand here, but this is pretty fine. This is a thread or a lace weight, and it will be, when plied, it will be pretty fine. Um, I don't know how fluffy it will be since I'm spinning it as a thread, but this feels like, oh yes, it'll be a little bit fluffy. Um, it feels like this fiber feels like it could be spun either, either thin or thick and it would make something very airy and very woolen um, just from the character of the fiber. It's, it's really beautiful and I'm very excited about this month's kit. I haven't decided yet on what to blend the rest of the kit with, whether to use cards or my new combs. I think I'm going to go back and um, use the combs with the February kit, which was uh, the theme of Sakura, which is a Japanese cherry blossom. And there's beautiful, some beautiful pinks in there I want to blend together to make some embroidery thread for my mom. She does beautiful embroidery and I am building up her collection of wool and silk embroidery threads and hopefully someday I'll also do some cotton which um, I don't have a lot of experience with spinning cotton yet. I keep trying though. I love to learn. And uh, I hope to add that to the embroidery threads as well. So it'll be fun. It really will be fun. And I can't wait to show you guys spinning some of those embroidery threads. I may break out my uh, Galen Designs Tackley for doing that because it's nice and fast and uh, for embroidery threads you want something fine and smooth um, and somewhat tightly spun. It just depends on the fiber and how well it'll hold together. Um, something like this I would think would hold together if I, um, for embroidery to a point. It wants to make a really airy yarn. Um, so I'm not sure how durable it would be um, for that purpose. But you never know. Some, some yarns will just, or threads, will hold together very well even though they look more airy. It just depends on the fiber. So, there we go. I'm already just working my way across the bobbin and um, keep feeling like I'm getting bit by fire ants. I'm very paranoid about ants here. So with that, thank you for joining me in this start of spinning this beautiful fiber from Napa Valley Fiber. I believe it's hand dyed by the owner and her family um, or just by the owner herself, um, Deborah of Napa Valley Fiber. Either way, it's really just a beautiful job done and I can't wait to see what next month's kit brings. 
all of the kits are beautiful and unique. No, not one is the same. So it's just fun. Thank you for joining me. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think of spinning this kind of fiber. What would you do with this beautiful rose-colored fiber? How would you spin it? I'd love to find out, and if you have any questions, please ask. I love to answer. Um, hit that subscribe button. We always love new subscribers. Share this with your friends if it's something you think they'd be interested in. And um, ding the bell icon so you receive notifications when I upload new videos. I try to upload them as often as possible. And as always, have a great day.